Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, my, my name is Dr. Sarah Kaiser, and welcome to the Quantum Software Talk series hosted by the Unitary Fund. Uh, Unitary Fund is a uh, nonprofit that helps support the quantum open source ecosystem. And uh, I'm really excited today to have um, Boshi Lee from the Qtip QIP project talking about uh, what they've been working on. Um, I do have a really quick announcement first that I'm really excited to. I think this is the the preview. <laughs> um, last year, the Unitary Fund hosted an event called Unitary Hack, which is basically a hackathon, but where you work on quantum open source projects directly, and you know you get you help develop the projects in the ecosystem. Uh, you get to work with maintainers, practice your open source development skills, and get paid. <laughs> so there are bounties on certain tasks and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, the, the dates for this year are June 3 through 17, and you can sign up at the URL right there. So, uh, there'll be tons more, uh, both on the Unitary Fund website and on our socials, so make sure to follow us there, too, for more updates. And without further ado, uh, I am super excited to introduce, um, let's hit the right button here, <laughs> Boshi Lee. How you doing? <laughs> Hello, hi, hi, Sarah. Hello, Let's, everyone. I'm going to make sure, chat, can you hear Boshi? Excellent. I guess you can hear me well. I'm not muted. <laughs> I can hear you. I'm just making sure that they can. Okay, cool. We're good. Perfect. <laughs> I've done this way too many times where I've just launched into stuff and totally forgotten. But anyway, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm super excited to learn. Um, the project is called... Uh, it's part of Qtip, but QIP. So what does that stand for? All right, so let me start the sharing, I guess. <laughs> sure. And I'll... Uh... Now. So yes, oh, indeed. Um, the software package is called Qtip, QIP. As the name suggests, it's part of the, you know, the Qtip organization. So it's a Python package that allows you, uh, help you to simulate quantum circuits at the pulse level. So it might be a new world, like the pulse level simulation to you. So it means that we are, instead of simulating circuits at the gate level, that is the unitary multiplied with some state vector, we actually simulate the circuit at the physics level. So I'll go to these details later, but I, let me first give some brief introduction to the Q-tip. Next slide. So Q-tip, the full name is Quantum Toolbox in Python. It is a Python project that was first developed by Pau and Robert many years ago in the group of Franco Nori. So it's initially intended to simulate different kind of quantum optic tasks. Uh, of course, it has been many years. So now the, those like the first developers already found their new jobs. Currently, the Qt package is maintained by an admin team, consists of people from many different institutions and different universities. Also, together with contributors, hundreds of them from different places on GitHub. Now, what does what does Qtip have? So Qtip, as the name suggests, the quantum toolbox in Python provide, provide you a set of tools that helps you to study quantum phenomena. Right, so first it provides you like um, a Python representation of quantum operators like Hamiltonian or unitary or super operators. And it also provides a series of tools to help you to visualize those like the block sphere I'm showing here, as well as Wigner functions, which might be familiar to those who are doing like optic experiment. Apart from that, an important part of Qtip is the quantum dynamics. So you see that here, there are a lot of different words. They both describe, you know, the dynamic phenomena of, of quantum mechanics. Now, this has been started intensively for many years, um, but the task 
today is that quantum information processing here in this um, right bottom corner is actually to we want to explore those quantum phenomena to do information processing. Right? That's where this this whole QIP community comes from. And the story today is summarized briefly in these nice figures. All right on the left hand side, you have quantum circuits that you probably already say a thousand times. And on the right, on the, on the right hand, you have a Hamiltonian representation. So each line here is description of a control Hamiltonian, and this uh, curve describes the amplitude of the Hamiltonian. So the, it's an equivalent description of a circuit, but now in the language of quantum physics of sorry of the of the Hamiltonians. So I will I will spend like half of the talk describe how what does this two description means and how do you map one to the other. And the last and the second half I will introduce you know in detail the, this particular package and how it is going to help you to realize this transformation. With content, yes, as I said, the first part I will in particular compare the two different uh, descriptions, the gate level and pulse level descriptions, as well as you know, in particular, how noise can be presented in those two different ways. And then the second part, you know, I will introduce you the like the structure of the code structure of the QATP QIP package, the how is the uh, like the control power is represented in how is control power is represented and simulated as well as, you know, give a brief hint on how the simulation scales if you go to a larger number of qubits or complicated circuits. All right. Help this find us know. Is there any particular question right now for this introduction? I, I was going to actually ask one. Um, yeah. Can, okay, yeah, people can hear me. Um, on the diagram with all the pulses, uh, you kind of had like different colors and stuff. Were those corresponding yes. to different gates, or kind of like what's how did those map to the C knots, X's, and H's that I see there? Exactly. You, you will see more later, but right now, uh, for you know, just to make it clear, um, these represent different control Hamiltonians. Like here, this X indicates that it's used to generate you know the X gate or X like rotation. And accordingly, Z for the rotation and G is more or less represented, uh, more or less responsible for the two qubit gate. Gotcha, gotcha. And we can use combinations of X's and Z's to do H. Uh, yes, and Y, oh. and every yeah. single qubit rotation <laughs> principle. Gotcha. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure I, I like it. Yes. The pulse diagrams are super cool, so I'm excited for the rest. <laughs> Right, excellent. So now let's begin gate level uh, vs pulse level simulation. So here, this is the uh, you know the circuit that you are seeing in quantum computing, where you have you know some initial state, some quantum gate acting on different qubits, and then in the end you probably do some measurements, experiments, and extract some classical formations. Usually in the simulation of circuits, you can stop here and you know output the quantum state as a complex vector as a result. So this kind of simulation mathematically can be described as a unitary, you know, acting on a vector state. Right? We have on the market many different kind of uh, simulators that provide this simulation. Each of them may have different advantages in different, you know, uh, circumstances, but you know, down to the mathematical level, they are the same. You know, you have a vector state, and you multiply each gate as a unitary matrix onto this state. Of course, uh, to make it efficient, you have different kind of tricks. Instead of representing it as a full unitary, you just Calculates the two by two matrix or four by four matrix, but in the end, they are all described by the unitaries. However, if you think about a real quantum hardware, that's what we eventually want to do. You know, real 
quantum hardware, we're actually encoding the qubit into some physical qubit. And like uh, ions or some photons or superconducting transmons. So what we will eventually want is to run this circuit on some hardware, which is eventually governed by the quantum mechanics. And in a somewhat simplified model by the Schrodinger equation. So the Schrodinger, in the Schrodinger equation, the dynamics is described by the Hamiltonian. It means that there is equivalence here in this figure between this unitary description of the circuit and this dynamics governed by the Schrodinger equation. This will be the map between the map from this circuit unitary to this Hamiltonian will be the, the most important part today. Let me first you know, show you how this map, give you an impression of how this map works. I hope that we answer also Zara's question, uh, you know, give a more detailed view of how this looks like. So assume now we'll have a, some constant Hamiltonian. And then this relation between the unitary and the Hamiltonian can be written in this matrix exponential form, where the Hamiltonian is on the exponent, and you have the time here. If you take the exponent, it will give you a unitary that you know this uh, give you give you an unitary matrix. So here I show you a few examples. For example, the X gate. Actually, in general, it can be called like X rotation, which is generated by a sigma X hat map. It sounds trivial, but if you actually look at this unitary with sigma X, you can do not just X gate, but a continuous set of rotations along the X axis. If you imagine you have a, a block sphere, this would be the rotation of the quantum state on the block sphere around the x-axis. If you choose this uh, chi, which is determined by the time here, if you choose it cleverly to make this sine chi to be one, then you get x gate up to some global phase, which doesn't have a um, physical effect. And similarly, for the two cubed gates, you can define something very uh, similar. So here I write you the CZ gate, or C not gate up to the you know, up to the hardware transformation. So you see that it is generated by this Hamiltonian with all one in the you know three diagonal elements and a minus one in the last one. And if you take the exponent here, you get this um, C Z like unitary by choosing the time cleverly at the, exactly the 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 point where this chi, where this uh, complex number become minus one, you get the CZ gate. Interestingly, same to the gate where you know we can we can sandwich this CZ to get a C naught. You can also do some single qubit correct single qubit rotation. That's not rotation, but more like transformation, and find out that there are actually more than one Hamiltonian to generate this kind of gate. Now here I show you this um, example of sigma z tensor sigma x, which can also be used to generate C naught gate, and that's actually the you know the physics behind the cross reference gate used by the IBM devices. So we have a quick question here. Um, yes. So uh, Diksha PH was asking, how do these pulses depend on the gates? Is the combination of pulses represents the Hamiltonian of the circuit or the quantum system? So I think, yeah, it's like, do the pulses uh, like derive from the system or from the circuit? That's <laughs> a great question. It's so, you know, it's, it's slightly different. When we think about quantum circuit, we start from abstract model. But if you go back like 20 years, when people first start to think about information processing, they start from the hardware. It's like you have a quantum system and you want to somehow manipulate it so that it behaves like quantum circuit. 
means that for different hardware, you have completely different Hamiltonians. And this Hamiltonians will determine which kind of native gate you can implement. I think that, I hope that answers this, uh, you know, for the same, the same gate, it needs to be decomposed to different native gates that can be directly implemented on the hardware. And also, I also show um, some more example on this later. Yeah, so I think that makes sense. You have, like, we have the abstract data model, which is the, the circuits, the mathematical descriptions of what we want, and then given a physical system, we have to, by physics, derive what pulses we need to implement that H or X or whatever sort of abstract yes, gate we exactly. want to run on it. Okay, <laughs> uh, this, that's an interesting question. Uh, okay, I'll... Let yeah. you here. So just just two more examples, all right, to just show you how this might look like. The moment the gate that is typically used in ions, which looks like this, and if you take the unitary, uh, takes the exponential, it will have a lot of cosine sign on the diagonal and this, um, I don't have name for it, and this off diagonal terms. And similar for, uh, for the isop gate, you have a uh, very uh, similar setup where you have this one coupling directly between the zero one and one zero state, which eventually gener generate a rotation between those uh, two subspace. So, yeah, you see that you already want to talk about gates. We have a discrete set like the Clifford gate. Uh, but in terms of the hardware engineering, you actually have a continuous set of them. And if you think from the perspective of, uh, you know, those experimentalists who works with hardware to generate gates, the you really actually think in terms of Hamiltonians rather than the unitaries. All right. So that was a brief introduction or a brief, you know, show of examples about this gate, unitary gate and Hamiltonian map. Now let's talk about noise. So we want so noise is a very important part in circuit because no hardware is perfect. And it's important to know what is uh, like the dominant noise in your system. And if you're clever enough, you can actually construct some counteracting schemes to mitigate that or act against that. So how is noise defined here in the gate level simulation? One of the ways is to insert, to mimic the behavior of the real quantum hardware, to insert some random poly levels, poly errors into a circuit. So after you apply some X gate or C not rotation, you insert some X, Y, some randomly, some X noise or some Y noise to simulate the random behavior of, of a circuit. A different way, which is more comprehensive, is to use a so-called quantum channel, like cross operators, to include the effect of decoherence. Of course, in that case, what you get is not just a vector state in the end, but rather a density matrix. We got one more yeah. quick question here. <laughs> yes. Um, so I, I think we'll probably get to this in a minute, but can QIP emulate quantum hardware Hamiltonians? Yes, um, <laughs> that, I think uh, that's so where we're getting to, uh, right? <laughs> go. Uh, so, so, I, so here I'm more or less just to show you what this what this means. Like why do we have, you know, the circuit on one side and also Antonia on the other side? What's the relation between them and how are they connect to each other? What is the advantage for this description? And exactly, I will. That's what QTP designed for, a QTP QIP is designed for, and I will, you know, go more details on that very soon. <laughs> Sweet, thanks. All right, so back to the gate level. Um, yes, usually there are two assumptions that I made when talking about noise on the gate level. So one is that we always assume that noise, or not, not always assume, but we usually assume that this noise are independent among different qubits, so that you know these cross operators or quantum channels can be 
uh, designed in a sim rather simple way. Another assumption is that we assume that often the noise applied after a perfect gate. That's like in the simulation, you after you apply a perfect unitary, you add these cross operators that you know, effectively it's like you perform a perfect gate and then add decoherence. Now you probably realize that in reality that's not the case. Right? In reality, the noise can be very complicated, correlated in both space and time, and also they are certainly not separated from the perfect operations. So how does the noise look like at the pulse level? Of course, here we also have decoherence that is more or less the same as the, you know, the gate level. But on top of that, we also have different type of control noise. Now this control noise, unlike those, unlike those you defined in the, in the gate level simulation, are defined in terms of noise Hamiltonians. So the simple example is here, where I show you this blue curve of perfect sigma z control that flips the qubit. Imagine that this, if this control is slightly off resonant, which means that the frequency is not exactly matching with the, that of the qubit, then we'll have a small sigma z terms. What is resulting eventually is that the rotation is no longer along the x-axis, but it's slightly tilted and you end up with a different, at a different point. All right, so this is actually the, the type of noise that one's thinking about when you engineer quantum hardware. And similar to this one, you also have other kind of noise, like the pulse shift noise, where you know the, the control signal is not exactly as the one you, you described. You want to give it a Gaussian, but it has some random oscillation, for example, in the shape. Or more, like more importantly, you may have some crosstalk noise, which means that if you want to address one of the qubits, you accidentally talk to its neighbors. This is common because the qubits are never in hardware, never, never perfectly isolated. Another example include like leakage noise, where your quantum state actually during the gate operation is excited to some non-qubit levels. Like for example, in the superconducting qubits, it might go to some uh, second level or third level that is not even described by the circuit simulation. So those are typical noise that you encounter in the physical description of the of the system. And you see that it it's, goes from a slightly different perspective, and instead of at, uh, you know, distinguish, you know, describe noise at each gate, you actually have a, sometimes you even need to use a larger hyperspace that is not just qubit, but even three level or four level system. Now we know the you know, the difference between the gate level and the pulse level, we can now come to the question, how do we simulate this pulse level circuit? All right, so here, this uh, yet text means that this, uh, this circuit inventory is mapped to the control Hamiltonian that in this form, where each H is um, Hamiltonian, like the sigma X, sigma Y, sigma Z, or this different kind of two qubit Hamiltonian I showed you before, and the C here describes the amplitude, like when the pulse is turned on, when it's turned off, and what's the shape. So this information of the circuit is encoded in this time-dependent amplitude. Um, so the more this noise and collapse operators will be added on top of this perfect gate, and eventually leads to a master equation, which is the description of the time evolution of quantum states in the open system. So, um, so I mean, it's I, fine if you are not familiar with this uh, expression. You just need to know that, like roughly, the first part describes uh, something similar to the Schrödinger equation, but now in the von Neumann equation form because we want to use density matrix. 
And the second part describes the decoherence of the qubits, like, sh like shown in the right hand side. Uh, so this basically this mass equation combines the effect of coherent evolution of system and the decoherence and combines them to give you the final evolution trajectory of your system. And surprisingly, of course not, Kitty is an expert in simulating this Lindblad, Lindblad mass equation. And you can simulate this kind of quantum dynamics, either use an ordinary, ordinary differential uh, equation or use Monte Carlo solvers that samples different uh, different like decoherence and trajectories. So before you go on, can I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> um, actually, relaying a question from chat from Andrea, uh, is yeah. con uh, control noise represented by a constant H underscore noise? It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. So in principle, you can define all different kinds of uh, control noise as long as it is a constant and is a constant Hamiltonian multiplied by some time dependent coefficient. So that's actually a very important feature that I will emphasize later on uh, is that you really want not just constant noise, but noise that might be correlated in time and also with noise that depends on your control signals. Thanks. All right, uh, just a short summary before you forget everything. So in the first part, I showed you this comparison between gate level and pulse level circuit. You know, how they are described in different languages between like unitary and Hamiltonian, time dependent Hamiltonian, and as well as how noise are represented in both of them. See that the, they describe the same effects, at least as by construction, but they have completely different, um, different way. Right? One time, at one side you have the discrete unitary, and the other side you have a continuous time evolution. And the mapping between them is then realized by the package I'm going to introduce you in details, the Qtip QIP. So I guess there's no other questions about the first part. I will continue then. So here I'm showing you an overview. Oh, okay. Th sorry, there, there is. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we're getting lots of good questions. Thanks everybody, keep them coming. Uh, so quick question, how do we perform non-stabilizer circuits using these pulses? Um, I guess by stabilizer circuits, uh, uh, you're referring to this um, uh, more like error correction related uh, circuit simulation. In fact, here with, so here we have something that's much more general, right? Uh, because any circuits is eventually supposed to be run on quantum hardware. And with, with this continuous description, you can define any kind of gates as long as you know what is Hamiltonian ge that generates them. And so I think in this sense, we, you can describe an arbitrary circuit, it's not, not just the Clifford gate or the stabilizer circuit, but really you can define your own gate like um, three level, three qubit Toffoli, or maybe even some four qubit gate, as long as you have some Hamiltonian that can generate them. Yeah, it, it looks like their follow-up uh, that they were maybe, maybe what they were thinking about is uh, using X and Z gates, you can only define Clifford gates, but I think you just answered that. Uh, <laughs> so. Yes, I mean, X, Y uh, uh, are just like examples of, of the gates. And these, like with the pulse level, you can just imagine that by changing the length of the pulse, you get, as I said, it has a continuous set of different rotation x, y. And with that, you can basically do everything you want. Sweet. Yeah, we definitely need arbitrary gate representation here. So, <laughs> cool. Yeah, Thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, stabilizers are good for error correction because you know this, um, 
this great set of Clifford Gates. Um, here it's a slightly different perspective as we are going to the closer and closer to the hardware level. You sense a little bit more messy, but also a little bit more general. Noise is messy already, so I think we're good. Oh. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks for the question. All right, so now let's start to have a look at um, the package. Um, so here is the workflow on how QTP QIP works. You start with a quantum circuit. You can either define it in QTIP. You have a, a class called QB circuit for that. You can also import it in CASM format circuits that you define elsewhere. And then the first step, we will compile, according to different Hamiltonian models, those circuit to the Hamiltonian descriptions that I just showed before. Basically, this is time-dependent shape that tells you when to turn it on certain type of control Hamiltonians. This, of course, requires you to know what is a hardware model. I need to know if I can do X rotation in my hardware, if I can do like um, uh, control Z gate. Hence, we provide a few predefined, exa predefined examples, as well as uh, an optimal control module that we automatically, using control algorithms, to find the Hamiltonians generate a certain gate. Next step is to add noise. The workflow is defined in the way that the noise, you can define the noise as a Python function, like as, as some like kind of a Python function that acts on the perfect Hamiltonian, right? You have some X rotation that's performed by a Gaussian pulse, and you want to apply some noise that aids, let's say, some amplitude noise or some additional noise Hamiltonians that are proportional to it. This way, you can define different kind of noise either through you know, noise Hamiltonians or through collapse operators at the Hamiltonian level. And the last step in the end, we will package these things together, build a description in Qtip, and send it to the Qtip servers. What is returned to you is the result of simulation, which includes like the results, the final states of the circuit, of course now includes an effect of noise, but also, because we're doing simulation, we can cheat a bit. You can also get the evolution trajectory of your quantum state during the simulation. Here is just an example where you can, for example, populate, uh, for example, plotting the population of some, some states during the whole circuit duration. So the, the package is divided in several different modules listed here it consists of a model that includes different uh, physical models I just described, as well as then the compilers that does exactly the job I showed you before that maps unitary following a pre following a predefined uh, script to the control Hamiltonians. And then because you want to you know, run circuits in parallel as much as possible, we have a scheduler that allow you to do pulse scheduling to explore you know, as much as possible how to parallel executing different, different gates at the same time. In the end, it's a noise module that provides an interface to define different kind of drift noise, decoherence noise, or amplitude, or even define your own customized noise, which I will also go into later in details. So in the end, what you get is that interface like this, where you have a qubit circuit defined and the qtip qopt, which represents initial state, provide them to the processor that represents the, you know, it's emulate, it's like the quantum hardware that you have, but of course here emulated, and which will eventually gives you the simulation results. It includes both the final states as well as additional information like the expectation value or the trajectories, the state during the circuit evaluation, circuit execution. I want to here show, 
show you this in a little bit more details. How is the pulse? This represent how is the like the pulse level circuit represented inside the the Python package? So just to remind you, the circuit after the compilation from the unitary to the Hamiltonian is fully described by this coefficient here. And so one of the difference, I think, between the, you know, the simulation in QTPQIP and the, and the sim gate level simulation is that instead of associate noise with certain gates, let's say you have 1% noise in your X gate, here we actually associate the noise together with the pulse. Physically, it makes sense because the same control hardware typically have the same kind of uh, noise behavior. And that's why we combine different um, noise that related to one particular control Hamiltonian into a class. In this way, you know, you can define the ideal control Hamilton, ideal pulse consists of the, you know, the control Hamiltonian and type qubits, as well as those define the shape, the pulse coefficient, and time sequence. So those defines a particular pair of this CH here. But on top of that, this is what I mentioned before about adding noise, you can add noise that based on this ideal pulse. Notice that here in this description, there's no gate anymore. You just have a continuous curve that describes the Hamiltonians you need to apply to the physical system, to, the, to a physical qubit, to realize this circuit. This way you can define various different kinds of noise, like the, you know, the noise that adds exponential tail after the gate, the noise that adds some time-correlated effect to the system, or some deco if, if some decoherence that it depends dependent on the, let's say, on the ideal control Hamiltonians. So this pulse shape here is represented in QTPQIP right now by a NumPy array to really support you to do arbitrary kind of shape. Uh, but uh, we hope that in the future we can also include like analytic expressions so that it can be represented in a more compact way. I hope it's not getting too technical. So to you know get back your attention a bit more, here's the interesting figure, the pulse again. Those are the a few examples. Okay. All right. Yeah, one more question here. Uh yes. it looks like uh Dev Quiro got, I don't know how to pronounce that username. Uh can you generate only crosstalk noise on a pulse with Q to QIP? I feel like you can do lots of different kinds of noise, but... So, typically it depends on how the cross-talk noise is defined. Um, in, so you have either classical cross-talk or quantum cross-talk. Right? In the classic cross-talk basically means that you have... When you apply an X-gate on one qubit, you also have... Now, when we apply some like a microwave pulse on one of qubits or some laser, the others are also affected. And there you can, this classical crosstalk can solve them to some extent, also classically. Right? You know, you when building your pulse signal, you, you add some compensation pulse there that directly cancels that effect. There are also like quantum kind of crosstalk, like the, I don't know, if, uh, probably not ever as familiar with, like the ZZ crosstalk in supercritical qubits. These are just couplings in the system that it cannot remove. But in bo for both of them, you can describe them by Hamiltonians, right? You can always describe them by the Hamiltonians with certain coefficients. And as long as you can do that, you can define them and include them in this H noise part. So short answer, yes, you can do, as long as you can represent them as some sort of Hamiltonians. Sweet. Thanks. <laughs> Good question. Excellent. So now a few examples of compiled circuits. Here you see the same circuit, 
that you see here. It's three qubits, very short and naive. If you compile them to different hardware models, you see those curves here. And you see that they look completely different for no reason. But that's exactly because the same gate I represent uh, realized by different Hamiltonians in those models. And those, uh, these are like two predefined Hamiltonian models where the spin chain basically use the, the X and Z control plus some exchange Hamiltonians. And the superconducting qubits will use um, cross resonance effects. So interestingly is that here, the cube is actually simulated as a three-level system. And after the circuit uh, simulation, you will need to truncate it or trace it to get the two-level description. And also you see that here you have different type of pulse chip. This is also because um, in a certain type of Antonius, you need continuous pulse to suppress leakage noise. Also in the last one here, you see that this is a rather messy pulse. That's because it's generated by an algorithm, the optimum control algorithm. And so the optimum control, the optimum control algorithm works like you give it a unitary or some desired evolution, and it uses some classical algorithm to find what is the pulse that generates them. Of course, this is only limited by like six or five qubits. If you go beyond that, the algorithm are going to take forever to, to solve, but it provides a different approach to compare to those approach that are inspired by real um, hardware implementation. As a summary, with this, um, you know, with, QI, with QTP QIP, you can compile quantum circuits into different hardwares where you are allowed to you know, build your own compilers that instead of, you know, instead of C naught, you probably have a different realization uh, of the gates, uh, different hardware, and then use the uh, Qtip solvers to solve the dynamics. So in the dynamics can include different kinds of noise that is defined at the Hamiltonian level. And of course, in the end, to, to allow you to also Define circuit also in other in other libraries and import them. We support you to import the circuits through OpenCASM standard using the function QIP. So in addition to those circuits in common sense, where you have this XYZ gate and two qubit gates, you can actually do more with QIP. With QIP. So for example, here I'm showing you like um, Ramsey experiment, where you first rotate the, give a pi half pulse to the qubits and rotate it to the uh, X, Y plan, and then let it evolve for some time and then rotate it back. So this is a typical way to measure like the T2 time for the qubits. And you see that here, you can actually formulate this experiments as kind of a circuit where this waiting period, where just wait for the qubit to evolve, is described by the idle, idle gate. So you see here that it's, so with this simulation, you can not only do traditional circuit, but also other different kind of uh, experiments to simulate other kind of circuit-like behavior, where you have some rep repetitive component in your simulation. Like if you want to do, um, dynamic decoupling or some like probably even error mitigation, you you can fold the pulses or like uh, make the pulse longer or shorter to study the behavior of the noise. And finally, let me also give uh, some hints on the simulation time. So what uh, so what can QTP QRB do? How many qubits can it simulate? So typically, if you want to include, uh, to, so first, to make it clear, the simulation is not going to be faster than a circuit level simulation, the gate level simulation. 
This is because you are well now mapping a discrete problem to a continuous Hamiltonian evolution problem, which is always harder. Um, but of course, the, the gains that you get to define noise in a more natural way to the, at the to the physics side. And here I'm showing you actually the compiled circuit of a 10 qubit QFT algorithm. You see that here it, it looks rather messy, but if you follow, if you know what the QFT circuit looks like, you know that at the end, you actually in the beginning try to entangle the like the first and the second qubit. And in the end, try to entangle the first and, uh, and the last one. And that's why you see here more and more pulses are required in the later part of circuit. So it's basically show you how what this compiler in QRB can do. But about the time, so eventually the simulation time will be dominated by the solver in QTIP. This makes sense because that's the hard part, right? Also for the also for the gate simulation. It will scale exponentially in the num number of qubits. You cannot avoid that. And also, it's what is different from the gate level simulation is that it will also be highly sensitive to the Hamiltonian models. Now, this means that, for example, if you want to include more levels in your qubits, then the Hilbert space of, is, of course, larger. And that will take longer time. And also, if you want to want to include some high frequency noise, which will also increase uh, the simulation time because the servers need to track all those high frequency dynamics. So the message here is that you need to carefully design your model and include what kind of noise you want to simulate and what type of noise you just want to ignore or use some effective Hamiltonian to simplify that. will be the end of the, the software pack, the software part. Um, yes, here I think I, I think let me first present this uh, summary and then we can go to questions. So to summarize this, the QTIP QRP package provide you tools to simulate circuits at the Hamiltonian level which can be used to, for example, verify you know, some simple experiments on a few qubits, especially to compare, to diagonalize what is the dominant noise in the, in the, in the hardware. Also for quantum algorithm design purpose, you can use it to test your algorithm, right? If its algorithm is sensitive to some certain kind of noise, and if, for example, some error correction, error correction scheme will that still work on um, this strange type of noise you actually ha have in your hardware. Or let's, for example, another example would be like error mitigation. Right? You, to, you actually map the circuit into the pulse level and to, to stretch or to stretch, not, not just to fold your unit race, but actually to stretch the pulse to simulate this, um, you know, there's error mitigation, different kind of error mitigation schemes. And yes, if you're interested, there are a bunch of tutorials that you can find. You can find on the QTIP web page, and they include uh, Jupyter notebooks that you can just run, um, run and read locally or online. And for some further development. So in the next version of Qtip, which is not yet released, but will come soon, Qtip will support more different type of data to represent the Q object instead of just num just instead of just sparse metrics. You can now choose if you want to use NumPy or sparse or maybe even QPy to run it on GPU. And yes, the QRP also want to make use of that feature to allow faster simulation of both at the circuit gate level as well as the pulse level. And so here's a doc that is written by Jack. If you're interested, you can find more detailed descriptions there. And of course, the Google Sum of Code is coming soon. And QTIP is also participating 
uh, this year's scope of codes and just just to let you know this this particular project the qdp qip start from one of those sub of code projects to th three years ago and this year we will have some projects like supporting qtip qip as a qskit backend as well as a more probably more computer science one is using to add another backend, data backend JAX to Qtip, so that we can probably do more uh, fancy stuff using automatic differentiation or using GPUs. And so yeah, deadline is approaching soon. Um, you are very welcome to uh, come to us asking questions, talking about proposals, and yes, that will be the end of the talk. Thanks for the attention, and now we can go to questions, I guess. Oh, we got a few already. <laughs> so, um, and actually, the the zeroth order one for me is where can people best kind of con you know if they do want to ask those questions like is there an email? Do you have forums? You like GitHub issues? What's your preferred channels <laughs> of communication? Uh, so it, it, it depends on what you well what what the message is right if you just interesting some questions uh you know about the the paper or about yes by the way you can find this on this uh this paper here with more detailed explanation examples and if you have questions regarding the uh, package you can contact me on unitary funds um, discord or by emails or if you have like um, code related issues you're also free to just raise an issue or raise a discussion uh, on GitHub, which will be also, you know, addressing the other people in the community. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, so one of the first questions we got here is, uh, can uh, Qtip QIP perform QPT on two qubits in a reasonable amount of time? I'm not sure I know what QPT uh, is. I'm also not sure what is QPT, quantum... I'm it might be a typo, and it's quantum phase uh, Fourier no transform, no. QFT. Quantum Fourier transform. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yes, I mean, so here I already showed examples that you can compile this. Q if the question is really about QFT, but uh, if it's not, please ask again. If it's about QFT, QFT, <laughs> then yes, you can compile it, and it's it's and about it's uh, quantum process tomography. Oh, quantum process tomography. Um, so Qtip has function on quantum process tomography. I, then I guess the answer would be yes, because with QIP, you can get the density matrix during the whole circuit run. And if and with Qtip, you can then perform tomo uh, process tomography on the, um, like the density matrix you obtain at, at each time step. I hope that's I understand correctly. I think so. Uh, folks definitely put in chat if, if that doesn't address it. Sure. Um, and thanks for helping me disambiguate what QPT is. <laughs> There's so many three letter Q something acronyms that I lose track. Um, so another question uh, from Andrea is, how do you know what is a good pulse level noise model for a given quantum processor? Aha, uh -huh. yes, that's very good question. And but unfortunately, I I would say there's no unified answer. You have to really dig into the particular hardware model that you are you are studying. And um, different hardware hardware really have completely different noise. Some of them are more you know, uh, sensitive to a certain type than the other. Like for ions, you might be worried about crosstalk, um, you know, in the sense that the qubit are detuned, but when you address one of them, the other one will be off-resonantly addressed. And, but for like for subactyl qubits, you will have leakage, which, and the ZZ crosstalk I mentioned before. So, I, I I would rather say there's really no unified answer to that, and you have to talk to the expertise in that particular hardware model. 
no, we have to talk to other people. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's a good question. And I think uh, probably something that like quantum process tomography might trying to help understand what's going on in your devices is uh, always helpful. Um, so I have a question for you, which is, so folks yeah. know about the project now, they know how to get in touch with you. If you could ma wave a magic wand, like what is kind of an area, I know there's the Google Summer of Code projects, uh, but like, what would you really like to have, like help implementing or kind of just open nagging things? Like if someone was interested in contributing, what would you suggest for them that would be helpful to you? I mean, I guess the for so for four different kinds of software packages, see we have some introduction documentation or some examples that you can play with. That's I would say that will always be a start. And then um, I think a nice way to get yourself a real task. I mean, in in, in the sense that you really want to study something, get yourself a real task. Like like those hackathons, for example, I guess you know the the Unity Fund hackathon or some other different kind of hackathons to get to know friends that are working on the similar topics. And then after that, you you know you know some you have some motivation, you have some people around you that are doing the same thing. That's that's really important, I think, because otherwise, if you are just fighting along, you will soon lose you know lose um, our interest. Then after that, if you really want to contribute, I think you can just choose one of your favorite software and look at the code or try to find any improvement that you can get at the doc, at the examples, at the code, and read the GitHub issue or read the GitHub PS. I believe the maintainers will always be very happy to, to see those. Absolutely. Um... If there's anybody else has questions in chat, please put them. Uh, I have a, another question for you, which is what do you do most, you know, so you're a quantum developer, quantum software developer, uh, I think. <laughs> um, I mean, you write software for quantum stuff. Uh, what do you do most on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, I know a lot of times I think that, you know, someone who codes just opens a blank text file and starts typing code. Like, what do you actually spend a lot of your time doing day-to-day? Actually, so I'm currently a PhD candidate, and what I'm working on is, you probably already get this feeling from the talk, I'm actually working on more quantum control related stuff. So summarizing a word, how do you find the best Hamiltonian that realizes a certain unitary? You see, that's, that's kind of the whole story that's following this talk. And that's actually I'm doing every day. Let's say, you know, I have some target unitary, and I, I know that I have some control in the hardware. Um, one way I would like, it's like it's do it kind of analytically in the sense that you find some, you try to be smart and try to, then try to be smarter than those guys who develop those gates, actually, you, you know, there's, and try to find a clever way to, to get past the noise or find a shortcut to some, to some problems. And another will be simulation, of course. That's like you know using Qtip or using whatever other kind of tools to to do simulations to get mostly for main numerics is to get insights. Like um, it points me into a direction, so I get some things that's rough. I have some guess, and they, I check briefly. Okay, it it works. Although I don't exactly know what is actually reason. And then I probably come back to investigate mathematically what is um, is the true reason, and probably from which I can generalize a nice scheme to construct gates that beat everyone else. Yeah. Sounds like that's the dream, right? <laughs> Just simulate, think, improve. <laughs> uh, um. Oh, another question from Omid Has, uh, Hasafar. Uh, can we do reverse engineering mathematically and use matrix logarithms to get Hamiltonians from unitary gates? 
compared to matrix exponential? So I have to admit, I'm not very familiar with the term of reverse engineering. Um, I think just like computing backwards, <laughs> like I don't think it's a necessarily. It, it, does that mean that you have some unit and try to find the control Hamiltonian? I, I think it's, you have a Hamiltonian, or to get a Hamiltonian from unitary gates. I mean, I think that direction's easy. I mean, you just evolve under yeah. each of the gates, right? So if, if the if the question is really that you have a certain unitary and you want to find the corresponding Hamiltonians, that's exactly the field of quantum control. Mm -hmm. And yes, so depends on what you want. If you want, like a very, if you ask it as a very mathematical questions, you get very mathematical answers. If you get, if you ask this as a, you know, numeric, more like um, practical questions, you have algorithms that can do that for you. Uh, as I, as I showed before, like this optimal control algorithms used in QTPQIP actually does that for uh, like um, five or six qubit gate. So you can in principle define arbitrary unitaries and then to find your Hamiltonians to realize that. But of course, if that Hamiltonians will work well in the experiments is a different question that would depend on the, the, the noise and what's, uh, you know, what's the, the property of the hardware. It's, it's always the case, unfortunately. And yeah, I, I guess people say that um, at the abstract level of circuits, since uh, since you're only treated uniformly and nicely, and since that you have uniform poly noise, uh, you know, the same decoherence of the same qubit and add other qubits. Um, but uh, the more you go closer to the hardware, the, the messier it becomes. And so the way of dealing with them also changes. Yeah, no. It's always the fact that the model doesn't match reality that makes things <laughs> messy. <laughs> But yeah, no, that um, great question. Um, I think we're pretty much at time here. So I want to say uh, thank you so much to uh, Boshi for telling us about this super cool package. Um, you can, there's links in chat and you can also, uh, let me just put a couple there, project. And uh, you're on the Unitary Fund Discord, so if people have more questions for you about the talk or about the package more generally, they can find you there on the Q-Tip channel, right? Yes. Sweet. Excellent. Well, have a great one, everybody, and we'll look forward to seeing you at the next Quantum Software Talks, and we'll see you on Discord in between. <laughs> have a good one.